2019 has been a busy year at the Yellowstone National Park. For the past 10 months, scientists and researchers based at the National Park have been giving us an insight into what's going on there. For some, Yellowstone is one of the most picturesque places you can visit. It covers over 3,400 square miles and research has shown that interest in the park is on the increase. In fact, over 3.8 million people have visited the park this year. This has been the most amount of people since 2010. Although Yellowstone is not the largest national park in the US, it's perhaps best known for sitting on top of a supervolcano. The system is still considered active and contains a reservoir of magma big enough to fill the Grand Canyon several times over. Over the past two years, the supervolcano has been showing scientists that it's still active. Recently, a park official has come forward and said that a thermal spring near Old Faithful in Yellowstone National Park has erupted for the fourth time in the last 60 years. This particular spring went from being dormant to spewing steam and water between 20 and 30 feet high. Something interesting to note is that this height hasn't been recorded since 1957. Not only this, but researchers working at the park have said that new erupting vents and surface fractures have started to open. They've even had to close a boardwalk in the popular upper basin. Scientists warned that last year two of the three warning signs there was going to be an eruption was picked up on. These warning signs include seismic activity increasing and an increase of gas outlet at the surface. Going back, a report was released by Yellowstone. Something that researchers have picked up on is that for the last few years, experts all over the world have noticed seismic activity increasing. This continued to increase into early 2019. One of the worries is that will these tremors affect Yellowstone? The newest information is that a 465 mile long piece of molten rock is rising, and this is happening directly underneath Yellowstone. Scientists had this to say, We're closely monitoring this 465 mile long piece of molten rock, and we can tell this slowly rising beneath the Yellowstone caldera. It's been shown that this volcano has erupted three times in history, with the first one being around 2.1 million years ago, the second 1.2 million years ago and the most recent being 640,000 years ago. We've discovered that Yellowstone's magma chamber is slowly rising each year. With all this activity, it's led scientists to speculate that the largest supervolcano in the world might be about to erupt. Data has shown that in the past 12 months, over 200 earthquakes have hit Yellowstone, and this suggests that a huge tectonic plate shift has taken place underneath the surface of the Earth. As you can imagine, when this news got released, people started to ask questions. One of them being, when is Yellowstone going to erupt next? As of right now, seismologists have said they're keeping a close eye on their data, and releasing news as soon as they can. Another piece of news to come out of Yellowstone this year was that over 50 seismic trackers around Yellowstone picked up on tremors. This news was released due to a recent study that was carried out at Yellowstone. This national park has been in the news quite a bit lately and these trackers have sparked the interest of researchers. Seismologists working at Yellowstone are doing more tests to see how it's affected the national park. Another recent study has also shown researchers the Yellowstone volcano is sitting on top of a hotspot. This means that every so often magma starts to rise to the surface. Rather worryingly, scientists have said that should an earthquake occur, it could take less than two weeks before a catastrophic reaction is triggered. So, with all that being said, what would happen if the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted? Referred to by scientists as a catastrophic super eruption, the force and material that would be ejected from the massive Yellowstone supervolcano if it were to erupt would be among one of the largest explosions to be ever recorded on the face of the Earth. When looking at estimated comparisons of this pressure and ejected magma compared to that of Mount St. Helens, it appears that the eruption of the Yellowstone supervolcano would roughly be 10,000 times larger than that of Mount St. Helens, and the Yellowstone supervolcano would roughly be equivalent to that of 300,000 explosions the size of the atomic weapon dropped in Hiroshima. What this essentially translates out to would be the immediate ejection of more than 2,500 cubic kilometers of ash, magma and materials. Though the supervolcano isn't expected to cause a massive upheaval of land, 
This large amount of pressure being released will still cause a blast wave that can cause damage out past the state of Wyoming, Idaho and Montana. Additionally, the Yellowstone supervolcano lies close to a number of sensitive fault lines all across the west coast. It's believed that this massive amount of pressure released in one moment coupled with the massive amount of force generated via the super eruption will create a domino effect of seismic activity that could lead to fault lines completely sliding in opposite directions, causing a number of massive earthquakes all across the west coast. The earthquakes would be some of the largest to have ever been recorded, and would lead to further damage of roads, highways, cities and nearby constructions, ultimately completely blocking off those affected from reaching the help they would need. The eruption of the massive Yellowstone supervolcano will do much more than just emit a large amount of materials from the volcano itself. It's predicted the massive amount of force and pressure released by the volcano will trigger other pockets of magma to release nearby. Though scientists are aware of the fact that the eruption of a volcano cannot trigger the eruption of nearby volcanoes, in the event of a supervolcano in its eruption, the incredibly large amount of forces and material buildup would lead to a pocket of nearby magma vents to form, creating a number of normal volcanic entities that will also spew out large amounts of volcanic materials. Though technically speaking the supervolcano is not triggering other dormant volcanoes, it will continue to form these vents of which will grow in size and will appear to be similar to that of smaller volcanoes having formed. It's also believed that with such a large enough tectonic plate shift caused by the overwhelming seismic activity that will be caused by the forces of the eruption, a number of large events could form along the ridges of the shifting tectonic plates. If these plates shift enough not only would there be a number of massive earthquakes, but there could be a number of newly formed volcanic entities all along the entire west coast. Researchers found that after the eruption of a supervolcano, it's often been recorded there tends to be a massive cooling event that occurs around the world. This is due to the fact the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from warming up and causing a global ice age. This appears to have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago when the Toba super eruption occurred, and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event there was an estimated 1 million human population, and after this event took place there was only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see in time in which the event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred, an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Given these calculations, it's expected that if the Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt in the modern day, the amount of ash spewed would travel through the atmosphere and block up the sun from all around the world, leading to a modern day ice age that would prevent the sun from being seen for 6-7 to seven years in total, creating a seemingly endless darkness for all life on Earth, and record low temperatures never before recorded. One of the main problems with the global cooling event is not the drop in temperature all around the world, but rather that of its effects on crops on a massive global scale. With this expected worldwide blackout, researchers believe that for more than 6-7 to seven years it will be impossible for farmers around the world to grow any kind of produce or grain. This also means it will be impossible for farmers to take care of livestock of any kind. Considering the fact that agriculture is the lowest rung on the ladder of economic scale, this would lead to disastrous effects on the industry, development, construction efforts feeding citizens in the global economy. Essentially, there would be mass starvation all around the world as people raided grocery stores for the last remaining food in the world. Additionally, the blackout would lead to a number of wildlife populations immediately dying out, as their habitats become destroyed meaning that hunting and foraging will be nearly impossible. Even a number of off-grid living situations would be disastrously affected, as the majority of doomsday preppers living on homesteads rely on local agriculture, solar panels for power along with a number of other supplies that require their local habitats remaining intact. With these changes, the blackout will reach everywhere around the world, making no place safe enough to withstand such changes. Not only will this lead to riots within the short term, 
but it will overwhelmingly lead to the shutdown of government civilization and order itself. As mass starvation circles the globe, the human population will be expected to drop by an estimated 95%, as the most developed countries will be affected the worst, and the least developed countries will adapt the fastest. So as of right now it's important for there to be researchers and scientists based at the National Park. Keeping an eye on this supervolcano allows us to get updates as quickly as possible. However, as some have pointed out, if this supervolcano is going to erupt there's not much we can do to prepare for it.